Hello, and welcome to Active Learning. What's the buzz all about? Hello again. My name is Monica, and I am a student teacher. And today, we will be talking about active learning. So you might ask, what is active learning? Active learning is a teaching method that strives to more directly involve students in the learning process. In order to achieve active learning, students must be engaged in reading, writing, and discussing. Students must be engaged in higher order thinking and tasks, and it addresses three not learning domains, knowledge, skills, and attitude. There are several principles that govern active learning, purposive and engaging, reflective, negotiated, critical, complex, and situation driven. Active learning activities include class discussion, think pair share, learning cell, short written exercise, student debate, reaction to video, small group discussion, and class game. Now that we have the basics down, we will discuss different types of active learning. Starting with cooperative learning. Part 1. Cooperative Learning Cooperative learning is a type of instruction that involves students working in teams to accomplish a common goal under certain conditions. These conditions include positive interdependence, individual accountability, face-to-face -face interaction, collaborative skills, and group processing. Types of cooperative learning includes Formal, which is structured, facilitated, and monitored by an educator. And informal, passive teaching in small groups throughout the lesson. Now, we're going to look at cooperative learning activities. Include jigsaw, inside-outside circle, reciprocal teaching, think-pair-share, and team game tournament. Let's take a look at an example of cooperative learning. Jigsaw activity. Puzzles or small groups can be between four to six students. Each student will be given a piece of the puzzle to investigate and understand further. When the pieces of the puzzle are put back together, each student will be able to share what they learned. When the group has its information organized and compiled, they can share it with the whole class. Next, we will discuss situated learning. Situating learning is a theory on how individuals acquire professional skills, extending research on apprenticeship into how participation leads to membership in a community of practice. Elements of situating learning, content, context, community, and participation. Claims in situated learning include that action is grounded in concrete situations, knowledge does not transfer between tasks, training by abstraction is of little use, and learning is a social phenomenon. Situating learning claims to instruction, authentic tasks, stimulated apprenticeship, anchored instructions, and learning communities. There are so many exciting things to learn about active learning. Next, we will discuss problem-based learning. Problem-based learning is a student-centered pedagogy in which students learn a subject through the experience of solving an open-ended problem. Problem-based learning includes working in small groups of learners, focused on the student's reflection and reasoning to construct their own learning, processes based on constructivism. Everything has its pros and its cons, and problem-based learning is no different. The 
pros of problem-based learning, student-focused, active learning, develop life skills, enhance content knowledge, and real-world experiences, including problem-solving We will also look at the cons. More staff use, traditional assumptions of students, more resources, more physical space, information overload, and facilitations. Let's take a look at examples of problem-based learning. These examples are taken from high school classes. Global warming and climate change, government reform, community health, highway safety and you, energy sources, lunch menu and calories, woman suffrage. Teachers develop lessons around real-life problems. Students try to find solutions to these problems using their new knowledge. Whoa, that's so much exciting information. Next, we will talk about the final type of active learning. And it is known as a flipped classroom. A flipped classroom is a pedagogical model in which the typical lecture and homework elements of the course are reversed. In a flipped classroom, short videos are viewed by students at home before the class session. The class is devoted to working on problems. So what is the difference between a traditional and a flipped classroom? In a traditional classroom, teacher is the central focus, teacher disseminates information, teachers lecture the students, student engagement is limited, and students ask the teacher questions. Class discussion is teacher-centered. In a flipped classroom, activity learning, students engage in content, a different variety of class activities, lessons become student-centered, more time can be spent in class on higher-order thinking. So what is higher-order thinking? It includes problem finding, design, collaboration, problem solving, work in groups, and research. Advantages of a flipped classroom include mastery learning, more problem solving in the classroom, and elimination of class routines. Disadvantages of a flipped classroom include Students struggle to develop personal responsibilities, increased time spent on computers and iPads, and increased preparation time for the teachers. Let's take a look at how a flapped cla classrooms are implemented. Let's look at an example from a middle school class. In a flipped classroom, students follow a watch-summarize question model. What does that mean? That, what that means is students watch a video at home the night before, they answer guided questions on a Google form, and finally they write a higher thinking order question to bring into class the next day. Teachers nationwide claim they have a ton of success implementing this model. Now that we have explored different types of active learning, let's take a look at the pros and cons of active learning as a whole. Pros of active learning. It is increased content knowledge promotes communication and interpersonal skills, students' increased enthusiasm for learning. Cons of active learning. Students could develop misconceptions, takes more time to implement, and sometimes you cannot cover as much content as you regularly could. Active learning is being implemented across different fields, English, science, humanities, literature, and math.
due to the increase of active learning techniques, there has been a significant amount of research done on the concept. The analysis of active learning is done using different media. Some of the different media include video, scribe, recording, testing, and discourse. Educators have different opinions about active learning. But now it's time for you to form your own. Thank you so much for watching by Monica Sipsiak, Adelphi University 2016 Education Capstone.